and then so I'm just gonna go Bosch and then cut to a shot. Cool. I'll be going. Sweet. Hey, I'm Adrian, and we are not doing that intro. <laughs> <laughs> it's our first ever intro. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> right. This this is why I like shooting in my own. <laughs> Straight face. <laughs> I'm Adrian. I'm George. And I'm Andrew. And it's about f***ing time. And today we are talking about the watch that first got us into watches and another watch that got us deeper into watches. Oh, yes. The watch that just where it went from desire to love, like something deeper. We realized it was in us and this has to be our life because we all live through watches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is our thing. Yeah. Um, but to start off with, we need to find out what's actually on our wrists now, today. George, what have you got on? I got the casquette from GP. This is the new ceramic one that they launched. Um, this is just, for me, this is a cool watch. Um, a it's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, thank you for, for telling me. Um, <laughs> this, this is uh, very, it, it's just such a great watch and it's, it's an unusual, and this explains me as a, as a, as a watch um, because it, it's odd. And I kind of think that that's kind of the the nice thing. It's just an odd watch, and and it's not your usual watch that you see on everyone's wrist, and that's why I like it. Looks a little bit like the one you did for Only Watch. Really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Andrew. Thank you, thank you. Okay, what have you got on your wrist? Are you because yeah. you've taken over? I'm going to grab your watch. <laughs> you take mine. I am wearing the Zenith Night Surfer because you're not the only one that can do Zenith watches, George Bamford. Look at that dial. I mean, like that is. Well, it isn't a dial because there isn't a freaking dial. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, Tor torture the podcast listener. But um, yeah. no, it is. It's such a cool watch. I thought I'd bring it just to show you guys because we talked about it a bit, and and here it is. Tell, Andrew. tell. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Oh, one more thing. One thing. Yeah. The the coating and the the case. It just that feel is awesome. Thank you. I, this is the micro bead blasted titanium bracelet, which it feels good. You were saying that just before you tried it on, Adrian. First oh, I feel. I, I love the finishing. The finishing is what stands out. I, I love dark watches. Dark metals and I love matte finishes. Uh, it's the stealthiness that comes through that, and it's not matte black. It's just there. Something else. You. Um, so what you got on. I like what George said about how you feel your watch is you. It represents yeah. you because it's a, a bit. What do you say? Weird. Yeah. Odd. Weird. <laughs> Odd. <laughs> Odd. Odd. <laughs> so, so this is what I feel a... about my watch. Um, I have the, my Explorer, the one six one four two seven zero, and this is me, uh, plain, boring. Vanilla. <laughs> classic. A classic. Thank you. Okay, yeah. we'll go with that. <laughs> a classic. A classic. But the thing is, we all know about that watch. We, we, but that's what I love is we know about that watch, but we don't know the stories. We don't know everything about it. And that's what I think is the cool thing about what we're doing. Mm. Absolutely. And, and we, we all come from such different backgrounds, uh, both professionally and, and through our lives. And so I think that in itself uh, brings different stories. What have you got there in your hand, Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> I just reached behind behind Adrian there to to grab a bottle of Four Pillars, which is an Australian made gin, and it is there but for the grace of Four Pillars that we go. Oh yes, look at this! Look at that! The awesome brand! It is. No, this is uh, has been the best gin in the world for two years running, and Four Pillars has been kind enough to sponsor our podcast. Thank very you very much. On. Can't wait to try that. There will be a, a drinks break at some point when we feel we need some uh, refreshments. And we will try a four pillars in each episode. Ooh. Some fuel. Can't wait. Yeah. Cracking. Cool. Let's keep that in short. <laughs> <laughs> so we get paid. So, <laughs> Andrew, let's let's start with you. Okay. What was what was the watch that first switched something in your brain to think? Hang on, there's something else here. It was a Panerai. Ooh. Right. See, Not what I was expecting we, we from you. <laughs> we don't pre-talk these things. No, I was uh, working on a watch magazine and it was before I had any inkling that this would be a hobby, a career, anything. I, I, I had a triathlete magazine. I had three travel magazines for the Starwood Hotel Group. So the yeah. Meridian, St. Regis, Sheraton, Western. Um, I was putting together, I was just a publishing guy. And in this broad mix of titles, I had a title called Fine Time for the Hourglass in Australia. Yes. Do you remember Fine Time? Yes. So I edited one of those early titles and in it, in amongst all the watches was a Panerai. And I've just never been so struck by the design of a watch. And that's the thing about Panerai, you know, it really 
it's so different. It's not avant-garde and yet it's different. So I spent years saving for a Panerai and then I got one. But this is where I go into watch two. Okay. It actually wasn't, it, it, I didn't feel what I expected to feel when I had it. It was like, it was unreasonably expensive for me at that time. Like I, I remember the price exactly, it was $7,850. That's, oh, Aussie. Aussie. Okay. <laughs> sorry, 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 where are you from? I, 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 <laughs> a dollar, our currency's not doing so well right now, so I think that's about 500 pounds. <laughs> well, at least, at least we're coming back to England, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, it is, but uh, it, I thought this would change my life. I thought this watch right. would be women, one song forever for all time no but i felt that it would complete me in some way you thought there'd be a crescendo as soon as you brought that watch oh, it was yeah, I, yeah. and look it, it's a beautiful object i put it on i felt very self-conscious about it i felt very nervous about it i, I was very just you know that feeling when you put on something yeah. super expensive for the first time I, you would remember this when you're, you're, you're aware of it yeah you're just aware of it all the time two days later i banged it into a door handle oh. and, I, and i chipped the crystal Oh, oh, wow. You really did bang I it. I really banged it. And, and in that second, I fell out of love with watches completely. So it was actually a very short romance where the love that I had built towards yeah. never got consummated properly. And it also just quickly ended. And I lost trust and faith in that watch. And again, I am a pretty clumsy and violent person. So <laughs> I uh, may have been me, may not be Panerai's fault, but whatever the case... I decided I wasn't a watch person and I right. decided I never wanted a watch again and I sold it. Wow. Yeah. So it was, you know, sometime later, but I just, I didn't, I, in, in between the chip and the sale, I got married in it. I still had it around. Didn't get any attachments to it. Didn't f feel. Can, can we go back to the it? bit about um, <laughs> you wanted it to, you thought it'd bring you the, I don't know, a lifestyle that wasn't the current lifestyle that you had. Mm. Was that um, pop culture? creating that or was that Panerai's branding? I think it was a bit of both. I think, right. well, it was not a status thing for me because none of my friends had watches, expensive watches. It was just, it was a personal thing. Right. But I thought I would get a sense of being more me somehow or mm -hmm. I thought that it would be some sort of a significant life change. But I realized when it was, when I injured it and that it was vulnerable and that it was like I had this and it was so expensive that when I chipped it, I just gave myself, have you ever done that yeah. heard a watch? Yeah. And just for days and days or weeks and weeks, just gone, just lamented that. Have you done that? Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. dropped my Kermit on, on the concrete and landed face down. And uh, it's one of those moments where you don't want to pick it up. It must have been a long three seconds for you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just leave it there thinking, it, it's a gamble. It could be broken. It might not be broken. If I don't look, then I don't know. So maybe I'll just leave it there for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you're, you're right. But the thing of being in fear of a watch... Mm. Uh, you know, these watches are, are meant to be worn and loved and beaten around. And I, I'm a little bit different as I've always come from this point of like, I want to see how it works. So I, I'm instantly, I'm the one that makes the first chip Yeah. Um, because I always then take... Then you can relax. So I always take the strap off a watch. I always want to see how they've done the case construction. Mm. So I always go in there and, you know... No matter what, even if you're trying to be really delicate, you're always going to pop something. You're going to make a little yeah. scratch. So as soon as I made that scratch, it's my scratch. So that's a different scenario where I think when you're not in the watch world and you're not, yeah. you're kind of from the outside looking in, you're going to go, I've just spent this much on a watch. And, and, and it's ruined. <laughs> no, but it's also unfathomable sometimes where you kind of go, this watch is worth x amount and you're kind of thinking some of the watches you know you go into some of the big brands they're worth more than cars and houses yeah. yeah and you put it and people are wearing them and you're like going what the hell are you doing yeah but sometimes i think that's the reality of it it's like you can either be in fear of what you're wearing or you can enjoy it and love it well in my case the the repair bill would have been i mean i, I was on 80 grand let's just be honest i had no money like this was more valuable than my car at the time, which was a Subaru. So I was, <laughs> I was not acting my wage by buying this watch. At, yep. And this is, I was mid twenties. So it was early in my life. 
And look, I, the funny thing about the story is that I did go on to have all these cliched watch experiences with it where they say, oh, I could never sell this watch. I got married in this watch. I got married in this watch. I couldn't wait to sell it. So it actually wow. <laughs> it did, it didn't work. And I just wonder, should I continue on with my, my, my true love story or should I, I think I should kick to one of you guys because <laughs> I've talked a lot. But the, my first watch that I truly wanted was not the, the, old, the watch that got me into watches. It got me out of watches. That's interesting. So I thought I'd throw that in there. I, I think that's such a it's such an unusual way of looking at it. <laughs> Over to you. What's what's your um, Adrian. so I'm a bit embarrassed to say this to be honest because I've I've only ever done it spoken about this story. Oh no, I have done it on my channel. So my first watch that got me into watches. <laughs> I've done always, it on my channel. Always good to get an exclusive, George. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's about effing time you talk about this bloody watch. So, wow. but, but I, I feel like this is a bit of therapy for me. Um, <laughs> so I'll just come out with it. It's, my first watch was uh, a Gucci chronograph. Uh, I've always been into watches. I've always enjoyed watches. I've always worn a watch. Um, and buying a watch has always been a thing. But they never really... I don't know. Nothing fascinated me about it. But this Gucci chronograph, um, I'm not a Gucci person and I'm not particularly a chronograph person, but my sister-in-law worked for Gucci. She said, look, there's a staff sale. I can get this thousand pound watch for a hundred quid. Do you want one? Yeah, sure. It's a fair discount. Yeah, exactly. That's, that, that staff discount. I'm like, <laughs> you want to be on Gucci a few shit. brands <laughs> like that. <laughs> she might get grumpy at me showing that information, but it's out there. I've done it. So, Okay, firstly, on that side, what 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 was this Gucci? Because it's describe it. There, there, there's a photograph. You know. I'm not sure if it's up. Let me just uh, get it here. So basically, it was it was quite a flashy um, looking chronograph. It was this thing. Oh, okay, yeah. So it it really wasn't my. Oh, that's that that white balance is really strong in there. Um, so it really wasn't my <laughs> kind of thing, but it was a fancy watch and I wasn't earning fancy money and so it felt nice to be able to wear a thousand pound watch and it not cost a thousand pounds but mm. the thing that triggered me was in a positive way it had sapphire crystal it had a mechanical automatic movement inside and it had a calf skin strap on it things that I hadn't experienced before because I'd always had eco drive citizens which have mineral crystal they come on bracelets and, and so this was my first taste of luxury I suddenly realized that actually sapphire crystal there is a value to it because this is crystal clear. Uh, the calf skin leather was nice. It was very soft, but it was a movement inside which fascinated me. I knew Gucci couldn't make movements because they're a fashion brand. And so I started Googling who made this watch. I uh, found it had an ETA, a, a cheap ETA movement inside. Led me on to watch forums, realized that, oh, other brands that I consider watch brands, Omega, Tag yeah. Heuer, these guys use ETA movements as well. Yeah. And so suddenly this became, it wasn't a Gucci watch. This is a Gucci powered by the same movement that Tag Heuer used <laughs> because I had this association. And you would bore people at dinner parties and say, I, hey, I know would. you're judging me for wearing Gucci, but, <laughs> but exactly. this could be a tag. And, and just, and it, just get rid of the squint. name on this. This is <laughs> yeah. not gu Gucci. So it's kind of filing off the Gucci. And you know what? I can think of some tags that have that dial configuration. I think you. No, no, that, that's it. It's, a, it's, it. it's got this ETA movement inside. I sold it uh, very, very quickly because I just fell down this rabbit hole of, oh my God, this people out there who actually talk about watches and there was these watch forums and uh, it was fascinating realizing that it isn't just a nice thing that's on your wrist people can talk about it and, and you, you can become obsessive about this stuff and so that was my gateway drug I, I, sadly I thought it was a quartz movement when you first brought it up that's it's a ETA movement actually it's a serious watch and, and it, it's it, kind it, of it was yeah you know and uh, yeah it's, it's and also Gucci, it wasn't what I was thinking you were bringing to the table. Both of you, <laughs> it's actually, I'm it's like, not, it's really not too bad. It's, it, in it, terms there of is it. a bit of bling in there. There's yeah. a bit of kind of yeah. like, um, it's it's not me, but it but it was. It, it, uh, I was I was working in retail at the time, um, and it's and, an altimeter date. Like that's a little bit fancy. No, exactly. It's it yeah. and it's it. I have a feeling. No, it wouldn't have been a ceramic no, bezel. It looked but like it, a but it's got a, a Daytona esque bezel to it. Yeah. Um, it, it just felt cool. Can I just call something out? We have Gucci to thank for Bark and Jack. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to thank them now. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> George, what, what, George was your, what was your first? What was your gateway? And George? was it love for you? Because it wasn't for me. It was for Adrian. Was it? Was it? No, love? no, no. It wasn't love. No, no. So I, neither of us were love. No, no. no. It absolutely wasn't oh, love. We get into the love. We're okay. Love, so yeah. look, before you had. You were in system, you had system watch, you had, so yeah. I've had other watches before my first kind of getting, first kind of going, actually, this is a really cool watch. Um, my first one was the Formula One. 
Um, I I love the Formula One watch. Uh, this for me is just a damn cool uh, watch. It's the full aluminous dial, quartz movement, um, kind of metal um, case. But I love the Formula One, and it was this one, not actually this one, because I just got this off eBay. Because I was just like, <laughs> I've got to show you guys what was my first one, my first ever formula one watch sadly i gave it to an ex-girlfriend she won't give it back i'm not bitter about that at all (laughs) but this was that thing of like the illuminous dial um i just loved how it glowed at night i loved the whole thing i felt like it was a grown-up swatch Um, can i just can i just remark to you in case you both don't know how big tag hoyer is in australia and how desirable these watches were oh like I look at this and there's a part of me that's just on fire, like still has that same feeling yeah. because there was an era. This was just a d- I, I, I feel that's, that's near enough iconic in, in, yeah. in the yeah. UK as well. That, that, this was yeah. my, and as I said, before I got into watches, I knew that this was the watch. That was what I wanted. It, it just even on design wise, I love how they use the Tag Heuer logo for the um, 12, uh, 9 and 6. You know, there was just so many cool things, the elements of this, and I, I really fell in love with it. I loved even how the quartz jumps. It's mm. it's not, it, it, there's something weird about the whole watch, but it, that illumination at night, and I, and I used to love it. Anyway, giving it to my ex-girlfriend, that was fine. But the thing that I, on this is it started the love affair for my children as well. Oh. So I, I brought um, the smaller size. Um, there was a pink and a blue one. Of course, I'm not stereotyping, but there was a pink and a blue one, <laughs> and I found them on eBay for nothing, and I, I brought them. But I was so pleased to get this back in, and I'm kind of keeping it as mint as I can. It's pretty good, Nick. Oh, no, no, it's... it's, it's, it's box fresh. Yeah, well, box and papers. Uh, of course I went for box and papers because I was meeting you two to discuss <laughs> what was my first ever watch. Um, but this was my <laughs> first ever kind of serious watch that really started. And that nighttime loom, I loved it at night when I was a kid growing up, putting it by my bed and just seeing... And I used to go to sleep with that light illuminating at me. And these are this for me is iconic. This is like... You know, if you talk to Tag Heuer or any brand, this was the thing where you just go, hey, I want this back. Yep. And, you know, you, you want, want that case construction. You want everything about it. It's, it's Tag Heuer's swatch, but it's the grown-up swatch. Yeah. And, and how much did you get that for? Uh, on eBay, uh, I think it was like a, I'm about to say 150 or 200. It wasn't, it wasn't a fortune. Um, no, I, but really, it was, it was, really not a fortune. What a killer watch for that. Um, but... It is one of those that you look at it and you go, actually, it is so, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, and, you know, my wife um, wears one most of the time. She's got some weird colored ones because they came out in multiple colors. But that one with that luminous dial with the black and the thing. And, you know, I wore it at school. I wore it everywhere. It was like, it, it was my it, Apple watch of, of the time. You know, mm-hmm. kids, my kid kids' friends are all wearing Apple watch or Samsung or some digital thing. That is that was that thing of like, you know, you'd have a swatch or you'd have one of those. I don't want things to get weird in episode one. I really don't. But why is the second hand doing that? It's running out of battery power. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's, it's power reserve. Okay. For the, li- the listeners at home, the second hand is jumping like, Four seconds yeah, it at used a time. to it used to jump a bit. It used to jump a bit, but not that jump. <laughs> you see the big jumps it takes. Yeah, it, it the, the longer the further it jumps, the uh, oh, does that that's the, that yeah. means it needs the less a battery. battery. It has okay. That's right. The, yeah. It's good that we've got watchmakers <sighs> in the building. Thank goodness. Thank well, goodness, Adrian's here. <laughs> You must no, but, have more no, but, this, than me, but the second hand, you do, yeah. know, <laughs> the second hand is a weird second hand anyway. So it's one of those things. That's um, awesome, guys. Before we get um, into, because I'm dying to hear what you guys have as the watch that tipped you over the edge. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we should have a drinks break. Okay, let's do that. Oh. This is our first ever Four Pillars drinks break. Let's let's get tipsy. Okay. Oh, hello. Yes. This is the first <laughs> ever Four, four Pillars drinks break. Four Pillars. Yeah, and four. You, I, I'm loving this branding. This yes. is, oh yes, they, they've nailed Rose, that. Rose gold and black is on. Now I just want to tell you a little bit of something about this name because it tells you the name of the still that it. Wait, wait, what, I, I love that you're it. squinting at it. Oh my god! Can someone else read that, please? What does Go that on. say? You're asking well, two dyslexics to read it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blind. It's the blind leading <laughs> the dyslexics. So still, Wilma, Jude, and Beth. Yes. Yeah, so they're three stills in Healesville, Victoria, where this gin is made. Now, the difference between this and other gins, I don't want to sound too salesy, but I, I literally drink this gin 
all the time. Really? And I have, I, I'm, I'm an unofficial ambassador for this brand, which is why it was so easy. To, ambassador to, where to, you pay them. Secure this partnership. <laughs> I may not have paid for four pillars in a while. But this gin is, uh, I have a little smell. It, it doesn't have juniper as the dominant mm, wow. sort of fruit. So it has, it's made from Australian botanical um, oh, man, that ingredients. Great. And it's just really different. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. That, really it f- smells fresh. Yeah, it yeah. Smells, I was going to say. It's, it's, it doesn't smell depressing where most gin <laughs> smells depressing. <laughs> this gin go smells on, on. like depression. Just pour me a little bit. Um, so it, well, let's, have, let's have a taste. Thank I'd be you, curious. To, this, is, this is the first time George and Adrian have had four pillars. So, oh, man, this that, is, that is such a clean. That's cheers. Chin, chin. Chin, chin. Chin, chin. chin, chin. Okay, now. Okay. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, it's, it's different, right? It's fresh as well. Yeah, it, yeah it's, that is. It's really... Okay, we've got a sponsor. We've got something that we have to do for the we sponsor. Do, Sorry, <laughs> let's not just drink the paid. stuff. Matt Jones, who is one of the co-founders of Four Pillars, is a big watch guy. And he said, hey, Andrew, lo- thanks for the email. Love, uh, I listened to Bark and Jack and, and I bought a Bamford um, G-Shop. So I'm on board, but I have a condition. <laughs> and he said, I, I want you guys to answer one question uh, in the drinks break Ooh. for a change up. So his first question is a pretty spicy one, and he didn't really hold back because I said, yeah, sure, man, it's called About F***ing Time. And the, the point of this show is that it's about f-ing time. There was a podcast that talked straight yep. and, and so on. He said, cool, well, I'm going to ask you a tough question for the, for the guys. And his first question <laughs> is, should, if it was a choice of two, should Bond be a Rolex guy or an Omega guy? Oh, I, so I, I guess his throwing is right in deep here. It, it all depends on whether he actually wants wants a watch or not. Okay. Because you can't get Rolexes. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't even. It, it took me a while to log into that. Um, look, Omega, I think worked very well with. I, I I'm going to say Omega because, you know, you kind of you go to the original books and you know you look at car brands. Bentley was the in the original books, but he's an Aston guy. I think the same with with you know Rolex and Omega I think he's an Omega guy I th- what what <laughs> nice, do you think nice look I I'm going to say an Ome- Omega guy cuz I'm Australian but I'm going to say Omega simply because Omega had way better gadgets no. like Rolex just didn't bring much they had like a little buzz saw they had some some sort of I just don't Magnet. think that in the gadget wars Rolex got got thrashed I'm okay, so, I want so, more gadgets from Omega but might so. I say four pillars this is delicious oh, th- 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 this is lovely <laughs> but I I have to end that question on <laughs> Um, Bond is is a special, unique character. There, there aren't many people like him in the world, um, and I feel Omega is a bit too common for that sort Ooh, of character. Okay. Aston Martin. If if he was an Omega guy, he would be a BMW driver. But Aston Martin's something special, and so I feel like. Yeah, but that, is, okay. Is then, no, no, no. Then, then I'd say to you is that are we just going to do a round on this? We're just going to keep going around. Okay, it's no, 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 because no, we're, we're carrying on drinking. It's like it's just like it's like this break has gone into a new new. But I, I think to myself is if you were going to say that, maybe it is an independent or something else. It's another brand that is not not any of the big brands. I think that's where. Okay. You know, I, I, I could say, but you're, you're asking two questions about two brands, both of them for me are ma- mass market luxury products. They're That's not, true. they're not, yes. they're not yes. niche. Yeah. They're not, you know, so it's kind of like you look at all the fashion styling of Bond and he's not as kind of like mass market luxury products. And so you have to then think it has to either be an independent or a smaller brand. I'd, I'd, I'd go with a fashion on overseas. I, I think. Oh Jesus Christ! Could you imagine that that bezel and stuff? Okay, we we're carrying. <laughs> we, we, do you know what I think? I think we should do a whole episode on this. I think we should as well. Oh, okay. that would be I, cool. I, I yeah. think it could get quite okay. heated as well. Okay, good, perfect. <laughs> thank you for the drink break, four pillars. Yes, four uh, thank you, four up. pillars. That Champions. was absolutely amazing. So, Andrew, I'm I'm dying to hear um, after your um, confusing start, mm. emotionally confusing, because you you bought this this Panerai thinking it was going to be. The game changer for you and it wasn't mm-hmm. and you smashed it um what was the watch i promise this was not a planned segue but it was actually a rolex submariner oh on, god on no. 
On a black NATO strap. Should we drink every time we see Bruno? <laughs> <laughs> no, because we will be absolutely... <laughs> I think Four Pillars would ret- retract the sponsorship <laughs> if that was the case. No, uh, look, there's a there's a few caveats here because a Rolex Submariner was a watch that I used to mock when I was at GQ. I I didn't I never wanted this watch, but I saw someone wearing it on a NATO, and that someone was Roger Moore. Okay, and I thought that's unusual and for and because it didn't really take off like he wore it like that in bond he wore it on leather straps in bond he was actually a massive strap hacker you know the, yeah. the bond was quite you know creative with wearing his his rolex yeah. um so wearing a, a no date submariner pre cosk so just the cleanest matte black elegant dial no text on it no date um on a black nato strap and then bashing the hell out of it and never being able to see any evidence of the injury. Yeah. And also noticing on the train or in different lights, I'd look at it and see that the finishing, I started to build not only sort of affection for this watch, but I started to build love for this watch. And I started to think, right, these fussed over products, when they're done to this extent, when they're done perfectly well, and when they can withstand daily wear, this, it began something. So it, that was, I, I regret to say that that watch is no longer with me, of course, um, as our early watches don't usually yeah. survive the whole journey unless you're George and you can keep every single one because, <laughs> you know, you look at me with sort of disdain every time I say that, but uh, this watch had to make way for others, but it definitely, and the reason we have this watch here is that I said to George, I don't have that watch anymore. Do you have a sub on a NATO? And he's like, sure. <laughs> and then pulls this out of the safe. And this doesn't give any, this is not the same as mine was a pre maxi case, pre ceramic bezel, um, totally different proposition. But this still illustrates that um, Rolex playing that way. And that was all of those elements of trusting the watch, feeling that it could withstand whatever I threw at it, seeing that it was versatile because pre-maxi cases are so hackable. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. They yeah. look good on just about anything. Leather, NATO, And as aged well. as well. They aged. look aluminium it, bezel, yeah. like $100 to replace at the know, time. And, those, that's oh. the thing is that was, that was back to being... It's a cool brand. I remember seeing some of the first ones. Um, I, I was, uh, I think it was Double RL in London, in uh, New York, and I was living in New York, and I and I used to go to flea markets and trade watches. But then going there and seeing some of those damaged and aged with a really yeah. gnarly. Sometimes strap the more you and, the more you, you know, mess them up, the better they look. Yeah. Well, and that, aging, that's one of those watches. Yeah, and how the alum, how like the bezel used to change color, and it used yeah. to go like Ghosted blues bezel. and purples and. They're just sexy. It, it, I can understand. I can understand yeah. that. I think, you know, this one I think is, but it's not. It's not got the same love for me. It's got not no. got the same love. So I don't even feel. I feel nothing for this watch in particular. But it still illustrates it's a Rolex on mm-hmm. a NATO. But uh, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I feel nothing for this watch. Take it away. No, that that was the watch that made me fall in love, and I still remember that feeling. And it was not something that happened instantaneously, like I thought would happen with the Panerai. Mm-hmm. It was trust that was built. It was a love that grew over time. But it led to me being here right now, one hundred percent. That's amazing to build a career. For okay, me. over to you. Me. Okay, um, <laughs> Adrian. So I loved Sorry, your agent. Um, your point about getting the Panerai and not feeling that life-changing moment of feeling, knowing that you have something expensive on the wrist, but the lifestyle hasn't come Instead with it. Instead of being freed, I was, I was worried. Yeah. I was caged. Yeah. It was the opposite feeling. I suddenly was, instead of being liberated to some new level of actualization, I was just worried, of, scared of door handles for the first time in my life. Yeah. It's, well, not, it's I, not good I, You didn't want to go handles. climbing in it. You didn't want to do, you know. I just didn't want to be in a house with door handles. <laughs> it's quite inconvenient. There aren't many houses without door handles. But my, my, my first expensive watch was a Rolex Explorer 2. And I had exactly that feeling of, I've bought this very expensive item and I'm scared to use it. I'm, I'm scared to wear it because I hadn't got used to that idea. But also, I just didn't feel the love for the watch. The watch that changed it for me was the Explorer, some people call it Explorer 1, the 14270. It changed it for me because I had no expectations. I bought this watch very early on into me starting my YouTube channel um, at Bark and Jack. And I, I bought it to slate it because everyone said how much they loved the Explorer. And I thought, oh, that's a boring watch. What are you talking about? It's terrible. There's so many more interesting watches out there. The moment I put it on the wrist, I changed my mind. Yeah. There was something magical about just being such 
and it stopped ticking. There's something magical about uh, it being so simple, just so chilled out. It, it isn't a flashy watch. It isn't, I had a Kermit at the time, I think. It isn't this big, bulky Submariner. It's just very so the slim. the Kermit wasn't the one that did it. Like, you didn't feel no, the same. No, no. It's, I, I thought the Kermit was cool, but it was this watch... Uh, which I can't get to. Just, just say it's stopping again. <laughs> Should we just point out that I've got watchmakers in the building and they need to solve some watches that can't Is there can't a take. huge magnet under here? Or, or was no, this, no, is this it, thing a huge magnet? <laughs> this has been sat in my bag. I've, I just put okay. it up for this. Um, so, uh, but, but yeah, it, it, it was the simplicity of this watch and there's something magical about it. And it was, it was a watch that doesn't have hype. It didn't at the time. I bought that for three grand. Now they're they're over double that. But it's also it's not the size that we look at today. Correct. Versus it, it's mm. and that's what I think you're going back to. You're harking back to um, the climbers. You're harking back to something that is a simpler design. Like with your Submariner to start off yeah. with, it's a simpler design. You yeah. know, this is this. You know, you can trace the history back to something that you go. Actually, it did explore. It did did do what it said on the tin. It's not. Exactly. It's not a kind of homage to something else. It's this is what it is. I, I think it. I think it's a genius watch, and I know why you you said that's the watch. Yeah, and it's. I, I love the <laughs> fact that it's per. It is a tool. Its purpose is to tell the time, and that is all it does. It doesn't need date. Doesn't need a bezel. If you want to know the time, here it is. It's very very legible. Yeah. Although the, the loom doesn't work anymore, but that's it. It's, it's my, my explorer. This is this is from nineteen ninety eight. Can I admit something too? This, I feel like this is the second time in the same episode, but I have always thought explorers were boring, the first ones. But I've never actually worn an explorer with khaki <laughs> until today. It's a uniform, and I put it on with this, and I just was like, I think I want to take this home. <laughs> honestly and it's because we talked about this in the in the green room as we we're waiting to come into the studio um do you like how i just turned yeah <laughs> you, 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 made, you, you made this like you sound so much better studio. yeah we're in by the way we're in george's apartment what is house. this this is a house in mayfair what is this the office this is HQ? called the hive the hive the, the hive. hive it is Air bound for watch department because sorry where, where are you from T yes. Time um, and what? Yeah, yeah. No, time and toyed. Uh, uh, and where, and toyed are you, where, where are you from? Sorry, both of you mentioned. Uh, <laughs> no, Fuck and Jock. <laughs> Fuck and Jock, okay. Pork and Jack. Um, <laughs> no, I, I, that is the most attraction I've ever felt towards an explorer. It might be that it's yours, Adrian. I mean, it might be oh, the I personal appreciate. connection. Ooh, but no, I looked romance. at it and I, I felt like I was um, a Cuban dictator. <laughs> <laughs> I think you even did say that. Yeah, so yeah, you just did kind say of like that. one of those things. I just want to say, and we shall not say his name, or maybe the, the sexier version, Che Guevara. Thank you, Four Pillars. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I could say that easily it works. before. <laughs> no, George. I, yeah, George, sorry. you're up. We, George, let's, let's hear what your Okay, um, your I've, brought, um, I've brought a Breitling Navitimer. Now, Ooh. the interesting thing about this, this is, was my first real kind of love for a watch and a movement. Um, I got given this, and I'm just going to turn it over for the cameras. I got given this in um, uh, 1996 from my parents. Um, I found out how much my parents paid for it because I found out after. Uh, it was £300, um, mm -hmm. so thanks, mum and dad. Um, and I got given it for my birthday. Um, and I, I'm, I'm born just before Christmas. I mean, literally just before Christmas. And so um, Boxing Day, that's the day after Christmas, just to kind of inform everyone else, um, <laughs> just because I can say that, um, it was in pieces. And I had a glasses screwdriver and a pen knife, and I took the watch to pieces on a towel, and I wanted to work out how it worked. And so this is me. I, as a kid, I used to take the TV to bits. I used to take uh, juices to bits and take parts out and then make them faster. That was my kind of thing. I, and um, even now I, I have an engine at home and I take it to bits and rebuild it. That's my kind of, I love this. But this watch. Um, Could and you it, put it back together and have it work? Okay. So there is a few things you've got to look at the case of this. So okay. the amount of chips, the amount of dents on the case. Yeah. The glass is <laughs> broken about five times. The hands have been replaced about 
three or four times. I was time. reminding myself how good the watch um, looks. No, no, no. <laughs> if you look under, uh, if you look closely, you'll see all the different things. Um, oh no, sorry, it was for Christmas. So Christmas Day, um, I got given this. I just realised because the uh, uh, engraving on the back. So everything about this has not is <laughs> like this is a Frankenstein now because it's all kind of gone back to Breitling a few times. Um, I don't even think George Kern allows it to come back now because it's got, <laughs> gone through so many things. The but, pampered watch is back. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, oh, please, no. He's he done hasn't tried it again. Um, but when I put it back together, there was a few bits on the towel. Um, <laughs> That's never a good sign. Uh, but, but the thing is, there wasn't a great YouTube channel. There wasn't a great um, blog and journal about how watches were. There wasn't mm. anything out there for me. So it was learn by feel, learn by touch. So I'm going to have it around because you can have a look at all the dents and the cracks and the bumps and the bit and this was my kind of light bulb moment of going i love this and also my parents loved it because it, it kept me away from the tv and kept me away from um stripping the lawnmower <laughs> the or yeah no no I, I mean you know all of those things that kept me away from that for about six months so i kept on taking it to bits, rebuilding it, taking it to bits, rebuilding it. Until there were no parts left on well, the Well, no, but it did go back to Breitling quite a few times. <laughs> um, but I, that's the thing where I got into watch because of this. I got into this watch and I just, and I got into Breitling in that way of kind of like, and I changed the strap over. I've, I've done, I did so many different things, but you look at all the dents around around the lugs, you look at the dent on the case back, and that was my love for mm -hmm. this watch. You can even see the scratches on the dial because I, I couldn't, I, I didn't know to put, um, you know, plastic over to pull the, uh, the hands off. So mm. I just went, boom, with a glasses screwdriver. That was it, it I didn't, there was no explaining at that time. Yeah. But I love it because each of those things is my problem. It's my yes. fault, yeah. I've, I've screwed that watch. But it's not a show pony. It's not one of those that sits in a safe and goes, oh, look how beautiful I am. It's like, and that's where I always love about my watches. When I said earlier, I, I, I see them in another way. I see them as how they're made, how they're built, how they're, I, I, and I see about, because I've always wanted to go inside them. I've always wanted to kind of open it up and kind of, and that I geek out on. So that watch mm. was the kind of the geeky side of me. Can you explain to me why it has a Tag Heuer crown? <laughs> it doesn't. Major look. <laughs> For the but little... almost. <laughs> almost. It, almost. It probably it it, may well have at some point. <laughs> it Maybe may... that's why George won't take your repairs anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. It's, uh, but it, it, honestly, for me, if you ask me about watches that would never leave the collection, that that's one that could never leave. To never sell. Um, because it's just, it's it's quirky. It's, it's an odd mm. one. It's also, you know, there's no waterproofing on it. There's no, you know, there's no... I learned the hard way because I always thought there was waterproofing on it and then I went swimming with it and then I realised I'd got to take it to bits and put it and dry it out. And it, it, anyway, that watch has been through a lot with me mm -hmm. and it was my first serious watch. And for the listeners who aren't going to watch this on video, the inscription reads, George, happy Christmas, much love, Ma and Pa, 1996. Oh, yes. I love yeah, that. that's a beautiful way to finish. Thank you, George. I, I wish more watches had, uh, had engravings on them. Yeah, um, amazing. So I, I, I think that's a pretty cool, pretty cool journey. And it's really interesting how we had very similar connections to watches or lack of lack connection of. Um, after after great expectations. Yeah, yeah. Who would have thought? And then we end up with the two most basic products in the collection. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Panerai and Gucci to a submariner and <laughs> to the stars. What a transition! Now there is one last regular part of this show. Oh yes. George, you want to explain this? I'm going to say what it is as, as an acronym because I just love saying it. I've been saying it over and over for about two <laughs> yeah. months. BYOI. What is BYOI? <sighs> this is about independent watches. And this is um, about, we want to highlight independent watches here. Uh, there is some amazing independent watches out there. Um, and, you know, when we're talking about this journey of watches, really, independent watches are that. You have to learn about independent watches. If you want to get into watches, if you want to learn about watches, you've got to look at these independents. They're doing the crazy things. They're doing the wonderful things. And the new indies are the micros. Oh, yes. So not only are we talking about indies, it's bring your own independent. And we incorporate 
micro brands into independence because they are indie, but they're sort of the new exciting wave, aren't they? There's a juggernaut of, of independence. Uh, there's a juggernaut of micros as well. And I'm sorry about um, not saying bring your own independent because I couldn't figure out what the acronym stands for. So <laughs> I'm I confused. Think, said it all. Thank you very much, Four Pillars. <laughs> So, break definitely needs to be later in the show. <laughs> oh, yes, <exactly. laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's my bad, bringing it in too early. I uh, see so every episode we're going to be bringing in, um, highlighting an independent. And the one that I want to highlight is Garrick. Now, these guys aren't new. Um, I know nothing about Garrick. This is. Oh, really? I'm already le- learning from this show. So, uh, Garrick, they're, they're based in Norfolk and they have a watch called the Norfolk. Uh, but what, what I love about them is. This is British watchmaking. I'm not particularly patriotic, but I think it's quite, kind of fun. That <laughs> it's so British. <laughs> it's I'm, British, not, I'm I not patriotic, like but... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really, really not patriotic. Uh, but this is a British brand. Um, what I love about these guys is that they're, they're handmade watches, but they have such a broad price range. And so essentially you can go to them and uh, get a bespoke watch made for you. And it can be not as little, they start at five and a half grand, which I think for a handmade watch is pretty epic. Yeah. Uh, and they can go up to five figures, mm-hmm. essentially be as, as intricate as you want. But what, what I like about this is a lot of independents are crazy money. Um, and I feel like this has a styling of perhaps a Roger Smith meets Grubel Forzi. They, they kind of, they have more um, intricate pieces like a, a skeletonized, I mean, there, there's not huge complications going on, but they it's it's this it has styling that, has that look though, doesn't it's, it? It's got the look, mm. and and of course it's not going to have the finishing of a Roger Smith or a Google Forty, but that's the kind of area that, that, that I'm going to place these guys. In. I just like them. I, I think they're they're simple, uh, nicely made watches that can be crazy expensive. They bug me um, because I I don't like the tails of the hands. I think that uh, it's it's an odd thing, but I do like. The design of it, I think you're saying about Roger Smith, and I think that, you know, when you look at, look, I am, I'm going to wave the flag for Britain. I'm going to wave the flag for British. <laughs> British. You did it like a couple of weeks ago with Bremont. So, uh, yeah, you've so, got form. so British, for me, British watchmaking has to be there. It has to be the forefront. It has to be something that we're talking about because I'm talking about it in that way of, I love some of the British designs. I do like Garrick. Um, I prefer the one that they did with Fears. I think that was oh, the that. one they did with Fears was absolutely gorgeous. I, I, mm. I think I think it, I think Fears with Garrick together. I think yep. um, Ga- Fears have a very good design ethos with Garrick on the side. I I I, I, I like the idea of personalization. Of course I do because that's that, that's what my world is. But what I look at is this watch. Just the only thing that bugs me is the hands mm. and. and and I can't, I can't get over, you know, and I think that's where you do personalization and that's why I look at the Fears and the Garrick and I think that for me is a great, great watch. Um, and also- that was actually my original um, choice was the Fears and Garrick because I agree. I think for both brands, that watch is the best looking watch from both brands. I, I think yeah. it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, but you look at the hands. Do you know what I mean? Is you look at the hands. True. I, agree. I, I, yes. I, I look at you know. There's a wonderful little thing. So if you look at the Fears Garrick one, um, I, I think it's absolutely amazing. It feels a little bit like you're showing. Um, I, I, you see this little chainsaw coming at the top, and you know there's something quite cool about all over design. I think I think they've they've got the hands right. I think the sub hands were awesome on this, and I think if I look at this, this for me is a proper. It's it it it's where I think Garrick should be mm-hmm. heading towards is something that feels like it has a different design ethos. Um, you know, when you say about Roger Smith, Garrick does slightly feel that way, but I think when you do something like this, I haven't seen it before. No, I haven't no, I, I haven't I, I, seen that, that. dial configuration is I cannot think of another watch no. that has an aperture like that at six, and then those two. Well, the, the massive two oversized two balance is, is that is very sexy. It's massive, isn't it's, it? It's it's a sexy watch, and I think that's where I, and I think Garrick is amazing, and I think that they are an amazing brand. I just think on design wise, um, there is something to try and try and be alongside um, Roger Smith, and mm-hmm. and um, I, 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 that's why I like what they did here because. You know, of course it was a sellout. Of course it was one of those things. You have the love affair of what two brands. What was the brands. price of this one? It's about 20? 20 something thousand. Um, 20 and a half, yeah. yeah. And let's be honest, that's a pretty big moment for yeah. British watchmaking. 
Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Bremont's selling out in, well, I don't know. Uh, Come on, George. 12. <laughs> I'm throwing you a bone here. About 12 yeah. hours. Yeah. That selling out in less than a day and then this selling yeah. out at that price point. I mean, this is massive. And, and both of these launched in the peak, same week. Peak UK. Yes, yeah, they the did. Same week. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for me, I think this is it. But why, I, why I'm saying something about this, I agree with you about Garrick. I think it is a great brand. I think it is. And I think, uh, and where I think their watchmaking is superlative, it's amazing. But when I look at design wise, it's something like, you know, it's the mixture, it's, it's, it's like Microsoft versus Apple. Mm. You know, Apple's got beautiful design and Microsoft's got all the technology or, you know, or it just feels like that or Android versus Apple. All right. you know, can, I, can I be risque here? You're a designer, George. Yeah. What hands do you want on that watch? I, see, I like what they did with Fizz. Okay. Honestly, and I, I, I Fizz, like the Fizz idea. Fizz have special hands yeah. and, 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 and the, the numerals as well that Fizz have. Yeah. This is all custom stuff that Fizz do. This isn't... Yeah. Um, it's not, you know, this. and it's not Garrick, and and that's, I agree, I, I I agree, but I just think to myself, is there big tail anchor tails? Yeah. You know, if you look at all of the hands designed, you know, I, I look at hand design, and I think, is there a reason why there's a big tail? And you know, and, and also because I'm dyslexic, so I, 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 you never know where the big hand and little hand is. So you know, I, I and, <laughs> to, and to be fair, as soon as you mentioned the hands, I thought immediately thought about legibility yeah. there isn't a huge difference in length between those two hands no and and, and, that, and that does and, make it challenging but i like i like the design i like yeah. the off center i like the design of the white dials there's so many things i like the case but, shape is but very attractive. what yeah. what would pull me to not buy this mm, is the anchor tails is the anchor tails and mm. and that's and i should i should be buying british watches i should be buying but i'd buy the fears over this mm. So strategically, strategically, I didn't choose the Fizz Garrick because I wanted to talk about Fizz in another episode. <laughs> <laughs> but killed, there we go. We've killed two birds with this stone. Well, we no, have, no, no, we no, have. because we, we'll, talk, we'll talk about that. Uh, absolutely. This has been awesome. This has been great fun. We should do this um, again. We should do this again. I'd, oh, yes, I'd, please. I'd love to do this. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Many more times. Um, so as an ending, please subscribe. If that's what you do with podcasts, do you subscribe yeah, to podcasts? <laughs> You're in autopilot mode. I am. You hit the bell notification. So we have got an Instagram account uh, about effing time. Um, and please um, stay here and listen to more about effing time. This has been absolutely a more amazing, fabulous and wonderful. Um, Andrew, do you want to say goodbye? I do. I just want to say episode two is the Bond Watch Deathmatch. Oh no, oh no, oh it no. It is. We're gonna, we're gonna alert. choose. I win. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no, no, we we each get to choose our weapon. George, I believe you're hosting. Oh yes. So I'm George Bamford uh, from Bamford Watch Department. This has been effing awesome. <laughs> I'm Adrian Barker from Bark and Jack. This has been effing fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Andrew from Time of Tide. And I can't effing wait for the next episode. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Let's get there. See you soon. See ya. <laughs>